<sighs> All right, so in case you didn't know, this uh, video is going to be heavily uh, influenced by Star Wars. Star Wars. Is there any more Star Wars around me? There's Star Wars right there. Empire. Anyways, hi Saber World. Um, I think it's time that I reveal this Saber. I've been sitting on it for two years and finally had the uh, time to install it. I stopped taking commissions, greedy me, to install what I want. And mostly that means catch up on sabers that I just have sitting around. So a lot of these in the next month or two, you'll see a bunch just popping up on my Etsy. Or you can DM me if you like them on Instagram, sabers forever. Um, Luke, the last Jedi uh, hilt. This was just, this was one, this is a one replica. I think it's the first version of his Return of the Jedi hero hilt. Um, and that's really the biggest change to make it the last Jedi. Um, but what's really great is this hilt has, uh, NeoPixel, I'm sorry, it has, yeah, Quick Connect, I'm sorry, wow, English, NeoPixel mounted Quick Connect in the emitter. So there's five NeoPixels in the Quick Connect. I'll show you that right now. Allen wrench, and then blade retention screw, loosen that. Um, and I made this, I used KR Sabres, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. So here's the Quick Connect, um, and there's five LEDs, five NeoPixels in there. They're all RGB, so they can be any color you want. Um, they're all set to green right now for obvious reasons, and if you don't know why, then good luck. Um... <laughs> I was really upset. I had this for a while, too. This is an all-aluminum uh, Target-exclusive KR Sabres blade plug for the Last Jedi Saber. Uh, no light can go through metal. So I made my own. I used that as a template. I used acrylic uh, blade material and aluminum that I machined myself and a um, epoxied everything together as clean as possible and it came out really well uh, so that's just gonna sit right in there like that there's no electronics in that blade plug because of this quick connect which I love stock hurry up and make more I need them like yesterday thanks um, all right so you're gonna get the saber like this and it won't turn on this is your power this is your auxiliary so you're gonna have to when you get it you're gonna open it up Take the bottom pommel off. See, I'm unthreading it right here. So this comes off. And then you have your blade, I'm sorry, your uh, chassis right here. So you're gonna pull that out. And if you wanna turn it on right away, I mean, this is really the general function of it, general function. Um, you're gonna pull the kill key. Is a lightsaber, ah uh, yes, a Jedi's weapon. So if you wanted to change any of the SD card settings, you would just pull this out a little bit farther. You'll see your solos hold 10 amp discharge, 18650 lithium ion battery. And then here is your Prism version 5.1 uh, with easy access to the SD card. You just push it in and it pops out and then you can put that in your computer. Um, when you're putting the chassis back in, always make sure that the sound card is facing the same direction as the activation box. Um, there are reasons for this. Most of it is wires. Um, and when you push it in, you'll see here the final lip after the notches right here. You can push that in that far. So it'll look like that. And then you're going to screw this back on nice and slow. Maybe even backwind it like I just did to make sure you catch the threads correctly. Don't do anything very quickly when you're doing this. Um, after two and a half minutes, the Saber will go into deep sleep after using it. I've noticed that one of the NeoPixels will stay dim on in deep sleep. So if you're not going to be using this for like a week, put the kill key back in. Don't lose it. If you do lose it, you can just store it with your um, charging cable in it. Again, I don't actually recommend doing that because then your saber is going to be sitting there open with the chassis partially out, and that's not really safe. So your best option is, if you lose this, either get a new one or um, just let it die on the shelf and then just charge it when you need it. 
So long story short, don't lose your kill key. Um, all right, so now the saber's on. So you'll hit power and the saber turns on. You can see the blade plug with the shine through uh, acrylic. So you get motion, collision, um, blasters, you'll tap the bottom auxiliary. For lockup, you'll hold it. And then you can gesture by uh, getting a force ability. You can um, move it while holding the auxiliary. Oh, color changing, you'll hit auxiliary and then power. I'm just going to rifle through all these because there are a ton. This would also be better with the blade in. So I'm going to do this again with the blade in. Alright, back to green. Alright, to, to turn it off, hold the top power button. And that will turn it off. To turn it on without sound, hold the auxiliary and then hit the power. And it turns on, you get all the same features, um, same controls as uh, I stated seconds ago. Um, to turn it off, hold the power button again. All right. So let's put the blade in. <clears throat> You're going to remove your blade plug. And with the saber, not only will you get a charger and an Allen key, but you get this NeoPixel blade, which fits perfectly into this saber. Go figure. Um, all right, so you're gonna stick this in and you're gonna twist it clockwise, putting it in and taking it out. Never counterclockwise. There are uh, a lot of reasons for this. One of them being that the NeoPixels are on a heat sink that is threaded in clockwise, and you don't want that to ever come out. It's tight, but who knows in three years? I guarantee it'll still be working, but you don't want to have to like worry about any of that stuff. So just put it in and twist clockwise, always clockwise, until you can no longer see any black. Now, from there, if you're going to swing it around, or anything, just tighten your blade retention screw. It only has to be like a little tight. It's really already a tight fit. You'll feel it putting it into the saber. Now, let's see, I'm gonna turn the lights off because you'll be able to see the scroll effect a lot better. So let's back up. All right, okay. And. blaster block or uh, deflections hitting the blade randomly. Um, change the color, you'll probably be able to see it better with red. So let's uh, cycle through all these colors. Here's white, bright as hell.
Now, to change fonts, uh, all right, to change fonts, you're gonna hold the auxiliary. It'll beep once. Skywalker. And play the boot up. TJ. Now, all of these, like I said, are Return of the Jedi sound fonts. Um, I did not make all of them, so go into the README if you feel like, and find out who made these fonts and give them your money because they're all amazing and they all deserve to be paid for. And if they don't, then I guess I should go and pay for them for you. So let me know. Anyways, um, this one's uh, Skywalker ROTJ by uh, actually Lord Blacko, I believe. Um, these are not all set to green yet. gonna go through the boots for you. This is a battlefront font that I did. throws the saber my heart breaks every time just like that saber <laughs> his lightsaber uh, yes. a Jedi's weapon. all right so that is uh back to the throne room font that i did between vader and luke um it's one of my favorites i tried to make it as accurate as possible um took a lot of samples from the movie and tried to edit the music and vader's breathing which is all over the place uh out of it trying to get it out so it's really hard to do that but um i think i did a pretty good job so i hope you enjoy uh this saber is bright loud and fun um you can find it on my etsy you can message me directly uh there's only one so don't wait and may the force be with you